So hello, my name is Jeff Kincaid with RD Kincaid. I am the manufacturer's representative for Wardflex, uh, which is the maker of CSST, which stands for Corrugated Stainless Steel Tubing. It is a gas supply system. Uh, it's a complete system. It's sole proprietary, um, so all our parts and components have to use to be used together. They can't mix and match with other uh, manufacturers' CSST. Uh, brief history, Ward is uh, one of the last two domestic manufacturers uh, of malleable iron pipe and fittings. Um, excuse me, malleable iron fittings. So uh, there's just Anvil and Ward left domestically, the rest is import. Uh, Ward manufacturing was bought out by the Hitachi Corporation in the 80s and Hitachi and the Japanese government were working together to come out with a gas delivery system that would survive earthquake and catastrophic uh, building failure. Black iron pipe um, during a uh, seismic event, if you had have catastrophic uh, fail building failure, uh, the pipe gets sheared. It allows gas to go through a structure. Uh, fires ensue, uh, and it's usually one of the larger causes of death after a major earthquake event is the fires that ensue from gas. Uh, and so when uh, Hitachi and the Japanese government got together, they invented this product, CSST. When Hitachi purchased Ward in the, in the United States, they introduced it in the United States in the late 80s. Um, again, cor cor uh, CSST stands for Corrugated Stainless Steel Pipe, or it's tubing. There's significant benefits over rigid gas delivery systems. It can be installed in one continuous run, so you do not have joints um, or having to do a lot of cutting and threading. It speeds up installation time. Um, you're, you can avoid existing obstacles where before you had to tediously work around through cuts and threads. And, uh, you do need to obtain training to install any manufacturer's CSST product, whether it's Wardflex or competing uh, manufacturer. Uh, and the training um, will be, have to be presented to a uh, building inspector uh, on inspection if they ask for uh, proof of, of CSST training. When you leave today, you will all be Trained. We used to call it certification, now we have to call it trained. But you will all be trained and, and have the proper training to install it uh, according to uh, all the building departments. You will now receive this card via email instead of them mailing you a wallet size card. That way you can print it down and also keep that file in your records. It does need to be updated every five years. You do not have to go through a class like I'm presenting today in order to requalify. You do need to go to the website um, and you will have a uh, training number uh, that you could put into the system and then you can take the test again and it'll re-up you for another five years. It has all the proper uh, and needed approvals and standards. They go on and on and on, um, but it has everything needed to uh, install. You could use Wardflex uh, in remodel, retrofit, residential new construction, multi and single family dwellings, commercial projects, uh, pretty much anywhere you would normally install a black uh, iron pipe gas system, you can install Wardflex in its place. Wardflex pipe and fittings have a wide range of pipe sizes to suit every job. They have sizes from 3 8 through 2 inch, uh, diverse selection of fittings, convenient roll lengths now from 26 feet uh, up to 1,000 feet. They do come on a roll. Uh, and the tubing diameter is, like I said, 3, three eight to 2 inch. Obviously no 90s, you can bend the pipe uh, in any direction that you need, but we do have a, a vast selection of T's, uh, male adapters, female adapters, valves, um, 
And just know that for an example tees, you don't have to use a WordFlex CSS T. You could use uh, a malleable iron pipe fitting with male adapters. Uh, there's different ways to, to uh, make a fitting. The big brass sizes get quite expensive. Tubing highlights. The tubing is annealed to enhance flexibility. This is something that WardFlex does that other manufacturers don't. Uh, and what that does is that makes our pipe a lot more flexible than our com competitor's pipe. Okay, the other, uh, how this product is made, you have a stainless steel sheet. It's annealed, so it softens the metal. It goes through an extrusion machine where the tubing is formed and welded in the same motion. When it comes out after that process, the stainless steel is work hardened. Most other manufacturers just coil it up and, and ship it. We take an additional step after the uh, extrusion process where we uh, heat treat it again and kneel it again, and it brings the flexibility back into the pipe. The more flexible the pipe, and you'll find out later in the presentation, but the more flexible the pipe, the safer the pipe is in the wall, okay? So you want it to be as flexible as possible. The tubing is annularly corrugated which simply means that the, uh, the tubing under the sheath, the, the grooves go all the way around, so it's easy to get your tubing cutter into the valley of the tubing and go all the way around it to cut the tubing to length. It's 304 stainless steel uh, tubing, and it has an approved operating pressure of 25 PSI. Uh, most of the systems that you see on the residential side won't be larger than quarter, quarter pound uh, gas, um, which they have to measure in inches of water column because the, the pressure is so low, seven inches water columns, typically what PG&E does on a resi uh, residential job or meter. Um, for uh, a lot of the commercial uh, gas pressures, it's typically what they call medium pressure, which is at five PSI. Um, so you see it's really low pressure uh, that you're dealing with on gas pipe. The fittings are approved to be buried in the wall as well. Just as, just as you do with uh, black iron pipe, you can have T's, 90's, and uh, uh, connections in the wall. WordFlex tubing, uh, again, comes in convenient rolls uh, from 26 feet to 1,000. They do offer these hard impact um, reels no charge, uh, and they're reusable. We ship our pipe in boxes. They're coiled up in boxes. Other manufacturers um, sell their pipe on a wooden spool. Uh, the wooden spool then for one guy doing a job would have to hang the pipe somewhere um, in order to pull it through the structure. With this reel, it allows one person to run the gas. They simply put that reel uh, down on the ground or lock it in and the tubing uh, can be pulled straight from that reel, saving uh, some additional time. Uh, the coating on the pipe is E84 uh, compliant uh, against flame spread and smoke density and allows the tubing to be run through air plenums and ducts without removing um, the protective polyethylene coating. The coating is yellow to signify gas um, they do offer another product that I'm going to go over briefly um, at the end of the presentation, the black um, and uh, the remaining footage is marked every two feet on the pipe. So when you're done with the job, you know how much footage you have left on your roll. Um, it's simply there to be able to put markings on the pipe, such as all the codes, the maximum operating pressure identify it as a, uh, put our brand on it, identify it as a gas, uh, gas pipe and leave uh, how many feet markings left back on the, on the, on the roll. Um, and the coating itself does not retain gas pressure. This coating here has nothing to do with, with uh, sealing your fitting onto the end of the tubing. So it doesn't have to be right up uh, to the end of the fitting like it is in this uh, exist, uh, example. 
it could be pulled back and you could have stainless steel exposed. Now, if you're installing this outdoors in the elements um, and you do end up cutting it short and leave some stainless steel here, we do want you to wrap it with 10 mil tape from the sheathing up and we also want you to uh, 10 mil tape um, the fitting as well. Um, but in, on, indoors and in garage and walls, um, you do not have to cover the, the uh, CSS2 tubing or um, cover the fitting in 10 mil tape. Uh, simple tools are needed for uh, installation. Uh, a clean cut is the most important thing on the tubing. If you run into any uh, issues with making a joint and having it leak, I guarantee you the number one issue um, is that there were burrs or it was a, a, a bad cut on the tubing. And you could simply take that fitting apart, recut your tubing, and put it back together. Um, and it would solve a lot of the issues. Um, a tubing cutter with a stainless steel cutting, cutting wheel is required. So again, that lends to a clean cut. In the beginning, we had a lot of uh, contractors, they would uh, take their um, plastic cutters as it doesn't have a hardened steel, steel wheel on the, the actual wheel of the cutter. And so they would dull quickly um, and then they wouldn't get clean cuts on the tubing. Um, we sell tubing cutters, but we're not in the business of selling tubing cutters. Whatever brand tubing cutter that you own now, most likely all of them have a cutting wheel designed specifically to cut stainless steel uh, CSST tubing, okay? Whether that's Rigid Reed, uh, Home Depot's brand, whatever it is, um, they make a cutting wheel. Um, channel locks, cordless drill, all basic tools. Um, how the fitting actually goes together, um, each fitting has three different components. It has the body of the fitting, the nut, and the retainer rings. When you were, well, let's talk, so making the connection, as far as uh, the tubing goes, after it's been strung through the structure, you're now ready to make your connection to the, to the uh, end point and or the start point. Um, you're going to want to cut the coating back so you expose four corrugations behind the finish cut on the pipe. That allows room to put the, to put the retainer rings on the fitting together. Um, again, this here showing burrs, that's not a clean cut, that needs to be recut. This is nice and smooth. And what I tell most, most guys is, uh, you know, when you're pulling it through the structure and you're trying to make that cut off the roll, that's being held in tension. So when you get your tubing cutter on there, um, maybe you'll cut 90% of the way through and then the tubing cutter will kind of fall off the pipe and it's just hanging on by like 10% there's a big push for guys to just kind of pull the rest of it apart. That's what creates the uneven cut in the burrs. What I suggest you do is you pull it through the structure uh, where you need to cut it off the roll. You can make a quick cut and then you can go back and make a second cut at the end of that pipe because without the tension on there and your tubing cutter in there, you can go around several times. And if the tubing cutter falls out that uh, off it and there's still 10% on there, all you have to do is rock that piece back and forth, and it'll cut cleanly off with no burrs. Cut, cut the PVC coating back. When you get your fitting, it's gonna be put, be put together. You're gonna take the, the nut off. Retainer ring comes out in one piece. You break it into two. The body you're fitting this will always be put into a malleable iron pipe fitting first. You're gonna wanna put pipe dope and thread tape or whatever you would normally do, use to put uh, threaded fittings together on the thread that goes into the malleable iron pipe fitting. Um, you do not wanna put any pipe thread sealant or tape on uh, the threads that you tighten the nut down to. It should be uh, no pipe dope and no thread sealant tape. 
Um, so this portion, the body of the fitting, is going to be threaded into your fitting. You brought down your pipe, you cut, the, cut it back, and now we're re ready to make the connection. Slide the nut over the end of the tubing. The retainer ring, as you see in the picture, needs to be put on the pipe so that one corrugation is out the end of the, of the brass tubing, okay? Got one corrugation out the end. Pretty easy. I guess you can't see that, but that's pretty much it. The retainer ring has a lip. That lip needs to be back facing towards the nut with one corrugation out. That's how it's gonna look. Nice clean cut, one corrugation of the stainless steel. If you're working overhead, when you slide, slide this nut down over that retainer ring, it holds the retainer rings in place so that they don't fall. Now you're gonna just simply pull the tubing down to the body of the fitting, and remember this fitting is already put in the malleable iron uh, T or coupling. You can hand thread it down to this point here. Then all you're doing is taking two wrenches, one to hold the body of the fitting steady, the other wrench to tighten the nut to close out that gap completely. There should be no gap between the nut and the body. They should touch, but you don't have to over torque it. You have enough torque put on this fitting uh, to meet requirements once that nut touches the body of the fitting, okay? Again, if for some reason you had to take this apart, uh, maybe because it was leaking, you didn't get a clean cut, you could take this fitting apart even after it's been put, uh, compressed together. You can uh, cut, recut it, re-put it together, and, and put it together. Or if you weren't leaking, but you forgot a protection device I'll go over later that you need to add to the pipe, you could take that fitting apart, put the retainer ring where it was before, if it wasn't leaking, put it back together, Tighten it up again and it'll seal again, okay? Where would that uh, ring on top of that yellow color? Which, which now? The, uh, can we put, yeah, that. This? Uh, the brass yeah, retainer on, rings? On top of yellow uh, color. No, you do not want to put it on top of the uh, cover. You want to cut that, that PVC coating back four corrugations, okay, right. from the end of the tubing. That's where the retainer ring goes on, so the retainer ring sits on the stainless steel. Right. It's a good question, though. Um, if you cut it back four corrugations, that makes it look like the sheathing goes right up to the end of the brass fitting when you right. finish putting on your fitting. It doesn't have to. You could cut it back eight corrugations uh, and have a little bit of uh, exposed stainless steel if you're working indoors. If it's outdoors, you've got to wrap it with 10 mil tape, okay? That's how the fitting looks. All, all you have to do is make sure that nut closes on the body and you're done. Inside the fitting, in the body of the fitting, um, you have, uh, it's a dual seal. So it takes that last corrugation and it pancakes it into the body of this fitting. And, and there's gonna, you'll see a gasket, you can pass that around. There's a gasket in the body of the fitting and a brass seat. And the tubing actually seals on both the uh, the brass seat and the gasket, okay? And he's gonna pass around the fitting so you can see where the dual seal. We're also the only manufacturer that does a dual seal. Everybody else it just uh, is stainless steel on brass. Um, and again, that can cause issues if you get a bad cut, you put the fitting together and it scores that brass seat, then it doesn't matter if you recut your tubing and get uh, a clean cut. Once that seat scored, it's gonna leak. With our gasket in there, it helps prevent having that issue happen, okay? Male, female, adapters of all sizes. Um, termination, where you're ending your gas run. Uh, all movable appliances must utilize a termination device. That's basically a, ri a rigid stub out. You can't use this product as a flexible gas connector to uh, any appliance, okay? It is, it is a gas pipe, not a... Uh, uh, an appliance gas connector. We have several different termination devices depending on where you are. 
They have floor flanges uh, and these other uh, types that they first came out with that make the joint outside the wall. Uh, once we got approved for concealment in the wall, um, by far this is the most popular stub out. It not only looks like iron black pipes installed for your end, for your end customer, but it's a lot easier to just hook up a, a female adapter to the top of that and you have a rigid uh, threaded uh, black iron pipe connection into the building to hook on your uh, ball valve and uh, appliance connector to it, okay? Uh, we also make gas boxes so that you can uh, push appliances back flush to the wall. Now, while this is a lot quicker and easier to put in than cutting and threading, uh, it has its disadvantages against black iron pipe that I need to talk about, and that's protecting the pipe. Okay, it's not as thick as, as black iron pipe. Um, it could be punctured by nails uh, and screws. So um, while it's easier to put in, you also have to add protection devices to it. They have manifolds that they sell, so you could run a main line and then you can umbrella down uh, and run home runs to the individual outlets. Um, installation locations. Same as black iron pipe, indoors, out, crawl space, attic, rooftops, doesn't matter whether it's indoors or outdoors. Some, uh, the one thing that cannot be done with the, with the pipe is directly buried uh, in the ground or under concrete without it being put into conduit. So above ground, you're fine. If you're burying it, um, it needs to be in conduit. PVC, ABS, or electrical conduit is acceptable. Uh, method uh, to put conduit on it. You obviously don't have to put a tracer wire in it because it's, it's stainless steel. Um, on installation, tubing should never be secured to a stud when you're running in a vertical drop. So the sheeting is okay with ultraviolet? It is okay with ultraviolet. You know, it's going to fade. It's going to deteriorate over an extended amount of time. But again, it has nothing to do with making the connections uh, or the integrity of the stainless steel tubing. The only thing that could be compromised maybe is identification uh, marks, but it should retain most, okay? Um, no securing the, the, the tubing to the stud. You don't run it down and secure it like you would water um, or black iron pipe. Uh, clamping the, the stud increases the, the risk of puncture damage. You want to route your tubing as close as possible to the middle of the stud bay as, as well. You don't want it running directly down um, the stud. Again, everything you can to leave it loose in the stud bay helps protect it. Here's some examples of uh, how it's run. Notice middle of the stud bay, no strapping. They do have protection devices I'm going to go over shortly where it's being tied into a rigid point. It's going through a fire break here. If somebody came in with a nail at this location later after the sheetrock's on there. That tubing can't get out of the way. You come down with a nail or screw here, the tubing will deflect out of the way and won't be punctured. Same down here where it's making its end point into the outlet. Where it ties in right here, again, it, it's rigid and held in place, can't get out of the way. That's why you need the strip wound hose here to again prevent nails uh, and screws puncturing the pipe. Some more examples using a manifold, going to home runs, being able to go around duct work fast and easy without cutting and threading, multifamily housing. Bend radius, what I like to tell guys is you don't fret over the bending radius. You obviously want to do a wide sweep as possible. You don't want to go beyond 90 degrees, okay? But, um, so just be conscious of making sweeps. You, don't, you can't do uh, extreme tight bends. Drilling and support. So now for horizontal, the pipe does need to be sort, uh, supported. <coughs> Not on your vertical drops, but when you're running horizontal. And for a uh, half inch, it's every six feet. Um, for three quarters or two inch, it's every eight feet. Um, and we want you to use metal, uh, metal straps. A lot of guys use plumber's tape or the metal hooks or straps. You just want to make sure you use a strap that doesn't obviously damage the pipe when you're, when you're uh, knocking in the strapping, okay? 
drill and support. You want to make sure that uh, you have plenty of room uh, on your drill points when you're going through the structure. Okay, so drilled holes should be a half inch larger than the outside diameter of the tubing. Um, in your design and installation guidebook, it actually has uh, what size holes should be drilled for what size pipe. Everything that, what I handed out to you has all the information that this is going over. It also has additional information that goes over a lot more detail uh, sizing systems. I'll go over briefly. Um, but it also goes over notching and drilling uh, requirements as well. Uh, again, it's approved uh, for having it behind in concealed locations. Appliance connections, fixed appliances such as water heaters, furnaces, generators can be connected directly to the system using WardFlex uh, fitting at the appliance valve. So if it's non-movable, you can hook directly up to it. You obviously have a ball valve in between. A movable appliance, you've got to use an appliance connector. If that's Movable appliances like a gas dryer and range will use a rigid stub out and you have to use an approved appliance connector. WordFlex tubing should not be run directly into the firebox on a gas fireplace. Uh, WordFlex tubing shall terminate outside the firebox in all fireplaces, either rigid stub out or black iron pipe shall be used to make the transition to a firebox. Again, it, sh it can't be buried directly in the ground under concrete needs to be put into a conduit. There is one out, an outdoor termination fitting, and if you use an outdoor termination fitting, most, most of the time it's used for either uh, gas heaters on decks or barbecue, that type of thing. There is an, uh, an O-ring kit. It's two O-rings that come with it. Um, one O-ring goes right behind the retainer ring on the pipe. The other O-ring goes at the base of the body of the fitting. And when you put it together, it prevents moisture from getting into the fitting because in freeze areas, it could freeze thaw, freeze thaw, and, and, and ruin the fitting over time, okay? If they uh, appear damaged when you put it together, obviously you gotta replace it, it's pretty common sense. That's what it looks like. One O-ring right behind the retainer ring, one O-ring at the base of the fitting. Protection, you gotta keep it from uh, contact with corrosive chemicals. So you do have to be mindful if they have pools and they're storing chemicals out there. You gotta make sure that any exposed stainless steel or brass is wrapped in 10 mil tape. Uh, you have to do the, light, uh, do the same for outdoor installations because of uh, uh, pesticides um, can be caustic to, to stainless steel. A lot of people think stainless steel is impervious to everything. It's not, it can be. Uh, corroded by uh, aggressive chemicals, okay? So outdoors, it needs to be wrapped in 10 mil tape, any exposed brass or CSST or stainless steel, okay? Pretty obvious ones. Most of them are all the acids. Now all the striker plates that you saw briefly that kind of go over and protect the pipe when it's going through the, the studs, um, these are hardened cased steel, okay? This is not like the water protection plates that you get from a plumbing supply house. These are hardened cased, they'll deflect nail guns. They can't be substituted. It's gotta be a WardFlex uh, striker plate. Come in a bunch of different sizes to protect the, the pipe. Here's some examples of where it's needed. Again, where the tubing is gonna be concealed in the wall and the tubing is placed within three inches of the nailing surface, the top surface of the interior wall or exterior wall, the plates need to be put in where it runs through the stud, okay? In addition, strip wound hose. This is your end point, attached to a stud. You got your tubing coming down the middle of the stud bay connected to the rigid stud out right here. If somebody screws in a nail, it's going through it. It needs extra protection. This is where the strip wound hose comes in. It's size specific. If you're running a half inch line, you need a half inch uh, strip wound hose, three quarter, three quarter, one, one, et cetera, okay? So it slides down over the pipe. Now if the nail comes in here, it can't puncture the pipe, 
As it gets up here, the tube becomes a lot more flexible and it'll just get out of the way of a punctured nail or screw, okay? So typically this is not installed without one of these. If you're coming up from below, you're gonna want to pull it up, 10 mil tape it to hold it in place, okay? I'll show you examples how it looks. Again, they have two pieces for top plates. You use the bottom piece just for the sill on the bottom plate. And then they have this, if you have to jump bays or go through a fire break, okay? Pressure testing. Uh, you could test this system to what the code normally uh, has you test black iron pipe systems. I'm finding that's typically 15 PSI for 15 minutes. That satisfies most of the local jurisdictions around. Um, you could, obviously it has a maximum operating pressure of 25 pounds, so you could you know, pump it up no problem to 25 pounds if an inspector has a question. They're aware of the product, they're used to it now, they're just typically gonna make you just pressure test 15 PSI, 15 minutes, pretty typical, okay? Uh, if they ever tell you to, hey, I want a 100 pound pressure test on this, don't do it. At about 70 pounds of pressure in the pipe, those corrugations start to spread out and then you can't get fittings on it. You just ruin the pipe. If that ever happens, you can call me directly. I could talk to the jurisdiction. I don't think you'll ever run into that. We used to run that into that uh, in the 90s. Um, minimum test pressure is one and a half times operating pressure, but not less than three PSI. But like I said, 15 PSI, 15 minutes, typical. Electrical bonding. All metallic plumbing systems have to be grounded, okay? It's, it's code. So um, if you're working on existing, you are supposed to eyeball to see if you could see where in the system the gas, gas system is grounded. Um, if you're installing new, you have to ground it. And by ground it, we don't want the bonding clamp to go onto the stainless steel corrugated CSST. A standard bonding clamp, and we sell them um, like that, will actually clamp right onto the brass fitting, and that, that's where you can get your bond. Um, if not there, bond it on any part of the exposed iron pipe in the system. You don't have to use 100% CSST, obviously. You're gonna have black iron pipe along with CSST in a system. Just bond it on the black pipe or the brass nut, not the stainless steel, okay? <coughs> and then you gotta run a minimum of a six gauge, minimum of a six gauge wire uh, to the uh, grounding bar. Okay, uh, there's the picture, uh, those are available anywhere, we sell them as well. Uh, where there's a local uh, conflict between a building inspector and our design and installation guide, the inspector always wins, I'm sure you guys are aware of that. You know, we can make arguments and say here and uh, and they can then accept what the installation, but bottom line is local code always takes precedence. That's for any, any, any manufacturer's product. Um, oh, so we're already on to the test. So that's pretty much, does everybody kind of have a good grasp? I usually don't use this to go over it myself, but there's such a large crowd, it typically goes quicker if I use the, uh, the uh, um, PowerPoint. 